Thank you for joining us today, everyone, live from the Customer Connection Studio. I would like to introduce our host for the hour, Mr. Eddie Sims. Thank you, Cindy, uh, and greetings, and welcome to Dorma Caba. Uh, my name is Eddie Sims, and today we're going to be discussing how Dorma Caba and its deep portfolio of products and solutions can help create a healthy environment for either you or any of your customers or any of the occupants of your particular building. Now, today we are meeting virtually in our brand new Customer Connection Studio in Indianapolis, Indiana, which is the corporate headquarters for Dormacaba in the Americas. One of the advantages of meeting here virtually is that it gives members of our segment management team, leadership group, uh, the opportunity to actually kick these sessions off, as well as maybe even sometimes sit in on the Q&A at the end. Uh, today, I want to introduce our Senior Vice President for Marketing, Mr. Joe Hudock. Joe? That's not easy. That's no. not easy. Eddie, <laughs> thank you it. very much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And good morning to everybody out there. We greatly appreciate you joining us in our Connection Studio. Uh, we put a lot of thought into the design and how we work this studio. Obviously, a lot of thought into our great host that you're going to be spending time with over the next hour. But I want to thank the uh, JL Jones group, uh, Jonathan in particular. Thank you very much for putting this together for us giving us the opportunity to tap into the relationships you have. Obviously, it's a relationship business, and uh, the more you get to know us, the more comfortable you're going to be with our people and with our products. Nothing more important right now than the health and safety of people, and uh, whether that's employees, whether that's associates in healthcare facilities, or the patients or the occupants of these facilities. Uh, our job is to make sure all of those people are as safe as possible. That's all the time. It's heightened now, obviously, because of the circumstances we're all facing with COVID. I know we're all investing the time and energy to, to battle that appropriately. So we want to do our part. We want to do our part in educating you, your teams, your people. We know we have a cross-section of facility people, of architects, engineers. We have some other salespeople. So take this opportunity to take some notes. Uh, you'll have questions I'm sure you'll have. Please make note of those, and you'll have time at the end, as Eddie indicated. But uh, I don't want to hold anything up. I just want to greet you. I want to thank you for your time. Jonathan, thank you. I know you'll have a chance for some words in a moment. So uh, let's get started and, and enjoy the next 55 minutes. Eddie? Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. Uh, Joe may or may not be able to c come back with us at the end, uh, but we certainly thank him for taking time to, uh, to make this introduction. I now want to turn this over. Uh, Jonathan, uh, if you have a couple of things that you would like to say to kind of also help to kick the meeting off, we'd love to hear from you. Hey, thanks, Eddie. Uh, thank you to you and Joe and Cindy and the rest of Dorma Caba for uh, helping us out with this week's uh, special edition of Training Tuesdays. We've been doing this now for about uh, four months and we definitely have our uh, highest participation uh, that we've had in the four months this week. So we're really excited for the special edition. And, and uh, you know, everyone on here, Eddie's got a lot of great uh, content to touch on today of, well, I guess not touch on, right? For touch free access. Um, and uh, as we go, go ahead and uh, type all your questions into the chat and uh, we'll take time for Eddie to answer those as we go. And again, I appreciate it, everyone. Thank you, Jonathan. Just a couple of housekeeping things to be mindful of. I know Cindy in the chat area, please make sure you open that up. Uh, she explained exactly how you can have that optimal viewing experience by having your screen in full screen. But then please also make sure that anybody that is on a dial in or you're on your phone or whatever, please make sure that you have your device muted during this entire presentation. Uh, please make sure that you maintain that. And just one final thing, I just want to go ahead and address the fact that we are primarily talking about healthcare environments today, uh, but any of these solutions could be for any type of door opening in any type of building. But um, this particular um, image was brought in prior to COVID and uh, you know, they may actually have hazmat suits on now in some of these applications, but um, normally they would have a mask on and probably a little more socially distanced or physical distance, but uh, we're in the process of getting that particular image uh, replaced. But we're going to get right to the fact that we as a company want to help provide some feedback and information of how to create that more hygienic environment for either you for your customers, um, whatever you come across. We, we want to be able to help provide some information about that outside of those typical standard things of 
washing your hands, uh, using hand sanitizer. Uh, if it's required in your area, wearing that mask that covers your nose uh, and your mouth. Um, some things, though, that we do have as an organization uh, that we could be able to help with is uh, Dormacaba can provide and apply an Aegean antimicrobial finish to many of our architectural hardware products, things that are commonly touched, like the lever sets or the, the crash bars on the panic devices. So if that's something that we could help provide, uh, we'd certainly love to be able to provide that information for you. But then what we're really going to do is we're going to go through several door types, uh, the, uh, the physical doors themselves, but we're also going to be talking today about pedestrian traffic control management systems, just like a, a product that we absolutely love and uh, y'all are gonna become a little more familiar with today, which is our Alvarado SU5000 optical turnstile, which truly can provide additional touchless accessibility and where it's required, uh, control building occupancy rates. I know that sometimes you walk into certain places, whether it's a restaurant or a large retail box store, or whatever, where you can only have 25% occupancy or 50%. Uh, these turnstiles, as we describe a little bit later, they can help control that occupancy rate if that's something that is required. But one thing that I do know that we have, and I encourage you to be able to go to this, even something that you could pass on to your customers, but I strongly suggest you go to it first. We have a brand new microsite that we have developed that's touchfreeaccess.com. I think it's showing up on your screen right now, touchfreeaccess.com. Very interactive site, and we're gonna talk about that several times during the presentation. But you go to that, it actually walks you through, it takes you to different, maybe different vertical markets that you want to focus on, whether it's healthcare, education, uh, government, uh, retail commercial, whatever that is. And as you answer the questions based on your access methods or a customer's access methods, we actually provide solutions, both short term and long term, of how to help create more of that hygienic environment and how to convert something that may be touched to something that is touch free. Okay, so what we really want to do today is we want to think about how do we determine which openings need to be converted, which touched openings need to be converted to a touch-free application. Well, think about any building that you ever walk into. Again, focusing today on a healthcare environment, but it could be any building. Think about the number of times that a physical lever set or a crash bar of a panic device or a physical door is touched throughout a day throughout a week, and then throughout a month. Sometimes that, the, when we actually stop to think about that, it can be a little daunting. Uh, even think of in your home. When you go into your home, how many times are you opening and touching your exterior knob set or lever set or whatever you use to get into your house? What about your bedroom door or the, the door to your rest or your bathroom? Um, maybe your um, closet for you to keep your pantry for your food. Any of those things. How many times are you physically touching those doors. Think about those high frequency touch points in common areas like restrooms or maybe in a healthcare environment, uh, a nurse's station um, or a nurse's or doctor's lounge, maybe a lab door, um, maybe a triage area or actually a patient room. Any type of perimeter entrance or exit or other high traffic openings. Think about how many times those things are touched and what can we do to convert those to a touch free solution? Well, basically, there are six different commonly found door types in any build whatsoever. Uh, we try to complicate this and think of uh, 15 or 30 door types per vertical or this, that, and the other. It all boils down to six different door types. And we're going to walk through those today in three different setup scenarios, but then at the end talk about the Alvarado SU5000. The first one we're going to be talking about today, and we're going to get right into it, but also remember before we do, in that chat area. Please, as I go through this presentation, and this is a live event, I want this to be as interactive as we possibly can. Uh, there's, I think there's a pretty large crowd, a large group that are on this call, but what we would like to do is, if you have a question, go ahead and type it into that oh, chat area. That. Cindy's gonna be monitoring that, and even after each one of these different setups, we're gonna stop for just a couple of questions so we can answer them right then. But then when we finally get finished with the Alvarado uh, SU5000 turnstile, then at the end, we're gonna wrap up with just some more Q&A to make sure hopefully we can answer any question uh, that you have, okay? Well, the first one we're looking at is gonna be right here to my right. I'm gonna step out from behind this desk. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this would be typically 
any type of interior non-latching multi-stall restroom door. Now, Eddie, you described a lot of things in that. What do you mean? Well, interior, of course, just on the inside of a building. Uh, non-latching, what does that mean? Well, it means that I just typically would be able to push on this door and it's going to open. There's no lever set. There's no knob set. There's no paddle panic device. There's no rim or vertical rod panic device. There's nothing on that door that keeps it either latched, locked, or secured. So just a non-latching door. And a lot of times they use this type of door if they need a physical door to be there for a multi-stall restroom application. Now typically this is going to have just a surface mounted door closer on it. Okay. So what we're going to do is how do we convert that? Well, also it's probably going to have just a push plate like this on the door and probably a pull handle or something like that on the backside. Now this particular plate can be provided with that antimicrobial finish if that's something that somebody wanted. But we want to convert this physical touched opening <coughs> to a touch free Daddy. solution. So how do we do that? that? Well, number Scotty? one, we're going to replace that surface mounted door closer with Scotty? a low energy swing door operator. Do, now, this particular product that we're seeing today you is the him, ED, the Dormacaba ED50 you series low Scott. energy operator. Now, Eddie, what does low energy mean? Low energy just simply means that it has to comply so with a particular opening, hold open, and closing method uh, that's slower than normal. It has to comply with what's called an ANSI standard. Now, as we go through this presentation, there are several things that either have a three or a four or sometimes even a five letter abbreviation that I'm going to assume that no one knows what those are, so I'm going to make sure that I describe it. Now, ANSI is the American National Standards <laughs> Institute. Uh, it is a governing body that really controls the standard and operational aspect of different things from automatic doors to a wide variety of products. This particular standard that governs low energy doing, automatic Salad? cylinder operators is ANSI 156.19. Now, what does that really mean? Eddie? Well, basically That's it just describes at. how safe this yep. door needs to be set oh, up cool. and to function when it's in use. Um, the typical no, best way no to remember to Suck. comply with. Now these are not the exact okay. numbers, so. but it's a great rule of thumb I'm to remember how a low energy no, swing door operator has yeah, got to function when it's being in when it's being deployed is the five okay. five five okay. rule. Okay. Now, Eddie, what is that? The five 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 rule just simply means that when this door is fully closed Who are you with? from the time it goes from fully closed oh. to fully open has to take a Press. minimum of five seconds. And I then just, five I'm, seconds from fully open it has to maintain that open position. And just then from fully open coming. back to fully closed, right. Right. it has right. to take another minimum of five seconds. Okay, so just remember that five, five, five rule. All right, Cindy's got her hand raised. Cindy, is there something that I need to address? Yes, please. We I think we have a couple people on, probably just on a phone directly, and we're getting some feedback for your phone. So can you please check your phones and make sure they're muted? Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Cindy. Uh, yeah, please just make sure, especially if you're on a phone, that you do have your phone in mute or on mute. Okay. So again, that ANSI 156.19 standard is that 555 rule. So what we have to do is we have to install the automatic operator. Now it does not run on a battery. So we will need to have someone, a licensed electrician or an electrical person that, that works within your area, whatever that is, but they have to run 110 volt power to this operator, okay? So a uh, 110 power. Now, what we also have to figure out is how do we send a signal to let this door know it needs to open by itself or automatically? Well, what we're doing today and in all of our different scenarios, we're showing the, uh, the 910 TC wave to open touch-free switch. Now, that is a product that actually is an, is an RCI product. It's one of the Dormacaba family companies, uh, Rutherford Controls, and they have produced this great wave to open touch-free switch. Now, this is a hardwired application. There are low voltage wires that run from the switch up to the operator so that they can communicate and so that when I wave my hand in front of this switch, a signal will be sent to the operator to then automatically power open this door. So we're going to show and make sure that this is, you understand how this works. I'm going to put my hand and wave it in front of the switch. The signal is then sent to the operator to then automatically power open this door. Okay. So again, I want to make sure the 910 TC, because this is also an interior door, the 910 TC is only designed for interior applications only. It is not designed for exterior use. 
Um, there are other products, and we'll talk about that more toward the end of our presentation, of some other products that we have for more of a weatherized or an exterior application. But again, we're going to remove the, the surface-mounted swing door upper, a surface-mounted door closer. We're going to install a low-energy swing door operator. We're going to have 110-volt power run to it. We're going to install a wave-to-open touch-free switch, have that low-voltage wiring connect to the operator, and then we're going to test this door one more time to make sure that it does comply with that 555 rule. Okay, so here we go. I wave my hand in front. Then we give one, two, three, four, five. Great. Now it's fully open. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Now as it starts to close, one, two, three, four, five. And five. Excellent. Now it complies with that 555 ANSI standard. Uh, now, something else just to keep in mind that the actual hold open feature of this operator, as long as that door stays open, it has to stay open that minimum of five seconds, but that is actually adjustable up to 30 seconds. Okay? That's a long time for a door to be left open, but it is adjustable to that. Another quick uh, comment to make sure that I make about the operator is that. Normally, or sometimes, when you have an operator like this and you have additional components like uh, a hardwired or, or low voltage wired wave to open switch, sometimes you have to actually install an additional power supply to provide the power necessary to operate that wave to open switch. Not with any of the Dorma Kaba ED series products. Those ED series swing door operators are all built with the industry only UL listed power supply already built in. So any additional power that is needed to run that switch or as we show a little bit, an electric strike or electric panic devices, whatever, um, there's already a built-in power supply set. So nothing additional needed to be added for that. Okay, so that this is gonna typify a, an interior <laughs> non-latching multi-stall restroom application, okay? Cindy, do we have any questions that have been submitted so far? In. Okay. So what is the technology of the operators that the that detects the motion? Okay. I found some of these technologies have trouble recognizing darker colors. Sure. This is just as active infrared that actually utilizes and, and picks up that movement that's coming away from the actual sensor itself. And that's what detects that movement. Um, we've not had any issues with the 910TC or any of our switches from either darker or lighter colors just because of the technology that we use. But we'll make sure that we provide that full um, specification or all of the specs that revolve around those switches. We'll make sure that we can provide that to give a little more clarity if somebody uh, would need that, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to our, my left here. So we've talked about the first door type. We've got five more to talk about. This is a single door that is either interior or exterior that positively latches. Now, Eddie, what does positive latching mean? Well, it's just unlike the non-latching door. If I were just to push on this door, I can't just manually push it open because it is latched or locked or kept in place by some mean or method. Now, this particular door has a, a, a Dormacaba 45H lever set on it, um, and that throw from that lever set, this mortise lever set, is inside what's called a strike on that's cut into the frame of that door that keeps it from being able to be pushed open or pulled open. It's very similar to the lever set like you would have in your home on your bedroom door. That lever set or knob set or whatever you have that keeps that door shut, it's just got a small little um, throw uh, from that lever set that goes into a strike into the frame that keeps you from either physically just pushing or pulling on that door without physically having to turn that lever or twist that knob to retract that little throw. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to convert this door to a touch-free solution. But keep in mind, even though this is an, a wood door in a hollow metal frame, this could be any type of singular latching door in any kind of application, whether it's interior or exterior. This could be a hollow metal door in a stairwell. Uh, this could be a back of house hollow metal door. This could be and represent an aluminum storefront door around the perimeter of a building, inside for an office, whatever. Just any singular door, single door, just one, that latches or has positive latching, whether it's interior or exterior. Okay, so that's the other two door types besides the non-latching door. So we're, we're looking at a total of three as of this point. So how do we convert this to a touch-free solution? 
similarly to the way we did the non-latching door with a little bit of a difference. We're going to remove that surface mounted door closer. Uh, for those of you that are aware or familiar with hardware, I mean, this could have an overhead concealed closer on it. This could just use spring hinges like some hospitality or hotel doors do and not even have a closer on it. But we're just going to say that this door had a surface mounted door closer on it. We're going to remove that. We're going to install a low energy swing door operator, which in this case, we also chose to use the ED50 series low energy operator. And are there other operators? Yes. We have other models like our ED100 or our ED250. Uh, how do I know which one to use? Great question. It really depends on the application and the conditions of that individual door. We're going to talk about that a little bit more on the last three types of doors that we're going to talk about because the conditions we set up were a little bit different. But we'll get to that in just a minute. So we've got the ED50 low energy swing door operator. Again, you need 110 volt power for this particular operator. We've once again utilized the 910TC wave to open switch that has the low voltage wires that run up to the operator. But now we have to overcome something that we didn't with a long, with the non latching door. This door physically is latched and closed and locked. How do we overcome that? Well, what we do is we're going to include and install what's called an electric strike. Now, Eddie, what is that? Well, just like I described a minute ago with your bedroom door or the home going into your home, when that throw is inside that strike, we're going to install a piece of equipment that when electrified and when a signal is sent to it, it's going to basically open and allow that strike to be able to pass through without me physically having to turn that lever or twist that knob or push that panic rod, panic device, so that it'll open, it'll stay open, time out, and when it springs closed, it will recapture that latching mechanism so that that door remains locked and secured in the manner that it was prior to it being opened automatically. Now, there is additional low voltage wiring that is needed for that electric strike, which then will integrate with the wave to open switch and with the operator. Well, once again, because the ED series has that built in UL listed power supply, we don't need an additional power supply added. All of the uh, voltage that you're going to be required to operate those two components is going to be pulled from the operator itself. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate that. And here we go. We're just going to wave our hand in front of the switch. It's going to send a signal to open up that electric strike and then a signal to push and power open that door. It's a, it's a sequenced, a time delay aspect that are all built in and, a, and able to be done with the control for our operator. So here we go. I wave my hand. Signal is sent to the strike to open up. And that allows then the door to be powered open and then it'll still function in that 555 low energy capacity. Now, if say this was an exterior door and say instead of necessarily having a wave to open switch on the outside, say you have an access control system um, and you've got a, a little reader on the outside, you could provide either a card like an RFID card or your credentials if that's what you use to access that building or some people sometimes provide mobile credentialing and what you would do is simply just use your phone or whatever credential that is that gives you that authorization you put it up to that and it would simulate the exact same thing happening as if I waved my hand in front of that switch it would release that strike and let it open and then it would power open that automatic door Okay, so again, we've talked about three different door types to this point, an interior non-latching door, and now a single interior or exterior positive latching door. Okay, so before we get to the final three different door types we're going to talk about, uh, Cindy, do we have any questions? Yeah, do these doors need to be tied into backup power, or do they just become manual doors during an outage or an emergency? Great question, um, and that, there's a couple of answers to that. One. Can they be tied into backup power? Yes, they can. Uh, we have some uh, locations and some people that either tie it in to the overall building generator for complete backup power so that in the loss of electricity, if the backup generator comes on and it's tied into the, auto, or the automatic doors are tied into that, they're gonna function automatically in that touch-free capacity just like they did with full power. In the event of power loss, just like the question that was asked, yes. These doors will revert right back to the exact same functionality that they had prior to being automated. Now, it will change the fact that they will have to be physically touched to be able to gain accessibility, but you're still going to have accessibility to them. They just won't open in a touch-free manner without electrical power operating, okay? Any other questions?
Yeah, we've got quite a few coming in. I'm just going to give you one more. And one more, we'll sure. Save the rest for the end. Sure. Um, if multiple toilet room doors are installed consecutively along a hallway, is there a chance that passing by a sensor will trigger and open it? Well, that's a that's a great question, but that's one of the reasons why you make sure that that read range away from the face of those touch-free plates is narrow, so it will not cause what's called those faults activations. The 910TC and a couple of the other switches that we'll be talking about today, they have a read range that'll only extend out to about three or four inches away from the face of that plate. We do have one, and I am very excited about this one that I'll talk about at the very end, that does have an adjustable range out to 12 inches, but they have to make sure that they never extend further than 12 to comply with that ANSI 156.19 standard, because anything with automatic doors in that low energy mode has to comply with what's called a knowing act. I have to physically know that I am doing something to cause that door to open. So a, a lower a range, read range away from the face, that's going to keep from those fault activations occurring. And, um, and we'll make sure that hopefully it will not cause additional activations um, uh, falsely that are unnecessary. Well, let me go ahead and move on to this last, uh, these last three door types. We'll make sure you keep on typing in those questions because we're going to have Q&A time at the end to be able to go over all of it. But we've talked about the interior non-latching door. We've talked about the interior or exterior latching door. Now we're going to talk about a pair of doors. Um, this is just going to be a standard simultaneous pair. Now, Eddie, what does simultaneous pair mean? It simply just means that this pair of doors, if I were to push on these doors, they're going to move away from me in the same direction and they're going to come back toward me in the same direction. They're simultaneous. They go in the same direction. This could represent either an interior or an exterior pair of doors. Don't have to be wood. Could be hollow metal. Could be aluminum storefront. Doesn't matter. But just for the sake of this particular setup, we chose to use wood doors. Now, the that's five of the door types that we've covered. The sixth, which typically is only found, maybe not only, but usually, I'll put it that way, usually found is usually in a healthcare environment, in an interior corridor of a hospital or a medical healthcare facility, and that's called a double egress pair of doors. Eddie, what in the world is double egress? Well, as these are simultaneous that move away and then back to you in the same direction, a double egress pair just simply means one moves away and one moves towards you. Double the egress methods. Egress just means exit. So double the way that you would enter or exit that area. And most of the time it's because you have gurneys or, or other personnel that are coming and going. So it just allows for that ease of usability and, and workability in that particular hallway. So that's the six door types that we're covering. Now we're back to the, the pair of doors. Typically, these are going to have just surface-mounted door closers on them and some type of latching mechanism. Um, we have on these particular doors precision vertical rod panics. Now, we chose just for the ease of use in this particular scenario just to do top rod only. You can't have lower bottom rods on these for true uh, heavier duty type of keeping those doors secure. Uh, but these are just top rod, ver uh, vertical rod panic devices. And the strikes up here at the top is what keeps those doors latched in that position. So you could have magnetic locks. You could have uh, a rim panic devices that come and meet and have what's called a mullion or a center bar that runs from top to bottom that these panic devices latch into uh, from the side like that. But for this exercise, we just chose to use top rod vertical rod panic devices. So what do I have to do to convert this to a touch free solution? I'm going to remove those surface mounted door closers. I'm going to install a low energy swing door operator. Now we chose to use the ED100 for this particular application. Now Eddie, why would you do that? Well, because we just concluded that in this particular setup, uh, this was an exterior pair that had some significant wind pressure pushing on the outside of this door, and we wanted a little heavier duty of an operator to make sure that if it was activated, the doors opened up. Or, in another hallway scenario, this pair of doors struggled with what's called stack pressure issues, meaning their air conditioning system or the HVAC system in that building wasn't truly balanced properly. And sometimes those doors, when they tried to close, there's a massive amount of wind pushing on these doors when this uh, air conditioning system is deployed. And it, it, sometimes it doesn't want the doors to come all the way back to fully closed and latch. So we needed a little heavier duty of an operator. And that's why we chose to use the ED100. How do I know which one? 
A walkthrough with the customer is the perfect way to find out. You need to see exactly what the application is, what the environment is, and then we can help provide that subject matter expertise to come up with the exact solution for that individual uh, customer and that individual opening. So what we're going to do is add the automatic operator. It will need the 110 power to this operator, just like the other ones do. We've also installed, as we did on the previous openings, the 910 TC wave to open touch-free switch. But now we have this situation of instead of having that lever set latching that door, we've got vertical rod panic devices that we have to overcome. How do we do that? Well, there are several options. Uh, one could be electric strikes at the top where these, lat these vertical rods actually latch to the frame. But what we chose to do for this particular setup was add what's called an MLR kit. Eddie, what is that? MLR st stands for Motorized Latch Retraction Kit for our precision panic devices. It's just a little motor kit that is installed on the back side of these panic devices that in, when they're activated, they actually pull the paddles in, it retracts the vertical rods and allows these doors to have free accessibility. Okay, so we've got the 110 volt to the operator. We've got the low voltage wiring that now runs from the switch up to the operator. <clears throat> How do I get power to the vertical rod panic devices that now have a motorized latch retraction kit because it still needs to be tied into some energy source, some power. Well, again, several ways to accomplish that. What we chose to do today was simply add what's called an EPT hinge. That's an electric power transfer hinge. Uh, in this hinge, in the barrel of this hinge, there are low voltage wires that run and we drill a hole on the back side of where this plate is and then a hole through the door into the back side of the panic device to make sure everything is connected. So now we have a setup to where I've got a low energy swing door operator, I've got a wave to open switch, and I have a motorized latch retraction kit on a vertical rod on vertical rod panics. So that when I wave my hand over the switch, a signal is going to be sent to the motorized kits on these vertical rod panics. They're going to retract the panels. They're going to re uh, the vertical rods will retract, and then a, a second later in that split second time delay a signal is going to be sent to automatically open these automatic these doors, okay? So here we go, just wave in front of the switch. Signal is sent to the panics to pull those in, the vertical rods retract, and the automatic doors are powered open. So now we have taken that pair of doors that were currently or previously touched and now converted them to a touch-free solution. All right, Cindy, do we have any couple of questions before we uh, get over to the SU5000? Yeah, actually quite a few, so let's just pick a couple here. Yeah, pick um, a couple. Can these solutions be used on hotel entry doors? Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, you know, most of the time on the exterior entrance of a hotel or a hospitality or lodging environment, most of the time they have automatic sliding doors, but there are a lot that just have manual doors. Can these be installed on those? without any hesitation. The thing that I would be just concerned about or mindful of, maybe is a better way to word it, is sometimes you may have that exterior environment that's not covered or sheltered, and you do need to use more of a weatherized or weatherproof wave to open switch. Uh, the 910TC is only designed for interior applications, but in just, a, in just a little bit, I'm gonna talk about some of the other weatherized options, but they should be able to be utilized. Now, it all depends on the conditions of those doors. There's different things to consider. Uh, something called a reveal. That's how far away is the frame set out away from the inset face of that door. Um, sometimes special arms have to be uh, utilized because there's a very long reveal. Sometimes you don't have height clearance above the frame to even install an operator. It, it really just depends, but for the majority of the applications, yes, you should be able to install a low energy operator for that. Another quick question? Yep, one more here. Uh, could you use an electric strike with the SVR pair? Absolutely. Electric strikes, they make electric strikes for that surface vertical rod without any question. Again, for just the sake of this particular demonstration, we chose to use a, a latch retraction kit. We make electrified latch retraction and a motorized latch retraction, but you could employ or deploy a, um, an electric strike for that same exact scenario, okay? Now, something I wanted to make sure is also mentioned that instead of using necessarily a wave to open switch, say someone, say you've got a security desk or a check-in area or um, a registration office and you wanted to be able to open that door for someone instead of them having to physically wave their hand in front of that switch, 
you can easily integrate a transmitter with an additional receiver located up in that header to be able to accomplish that same thing. It's really just a wireless solution that's battery powered in this little mini transmitter that operates like your garage door opener does. So that when I push this mini remote, a signal is sent to the panics to retract and then a signal is sent to power open those automatic doors. And that can be accomplished with great ease, okay? Same exact thing and scenario can be set up on the single latching door to where all I do is instead of waving in front of that switch, someone has just a little keychain size fob remote control or you could have a two button or a four button or whatever type of little handheld remote that you want. Simply push the button, the electric strike opens and that door is powered open. One thing I do like to mention is there are times when outside of, I know this is primarily just a touch-free solution for hygienic purposes, but any type of application where you may need an accessibility uh, for someone that may cannot twist a lever or turn a knob. We actually had a student at University of South Florida in Tampa, where I'm from, uh, or where I live currently, um, that she had a dorm room and she wanted to be able to have a safe and secured environment when she was in that room. But she could, she was pretty much confined to a wheelchair. She could not physically turn the lever or twist a knob. So what did we do? We added a low energy swing door operator to her dorm room. She had an electric, she had a, a deadbolt on her door that was a full one inch thrown deadbolt. That what we did is we added an electric strike to that um, frame that would receive and capture a fully thrown one inch deadbolt. So that when she came up to that door with her little mini handheld transmitter that we gave her that she put right on her wheelchair and simply push that button that that strike opened up allowed that one inch deadbolt and that door to freely open all the way it allowed her to, to get into her room and then when that door closed it recaptured that one inch deadbolt so she had a secured dorm room something that she felt safe in we actually did the almost identical setup for another student at another college where after she graduated from that law school we took that operator down and installed it on her apartment door and set that same type of strike scenario up for her so it's, it's sometimes just more than just touch free. Sometimes there's really a need uh, for that just from a safety or an accessibility standpoint. But then also we can do the exact same thing with the non-latching door. Simply have a remote, push the button, and it'll automatically power open that door. Uh, Cindy, we got time for one question before we get over to the Alvarado product. Oh, okay, um, let's see. Let's just pick one here. There's a lot. Um, are there any tailgater provisions with these systems? With these particular systems, um, no, these don't show any either tail, anti-tailgating or anti-piggybacking. We're going to talk about that in just a minute with the Alvarado S5000. But if there is an access control system that is already deployed that provides that level of anti-tailgating or anti-piggybacking, the automatic doors can certainly be incorporated and integrated with that particular application. Okay? All right, now, here's the final product that we're going to be talking about today is a pedestrian traffic control system. This is the Alvarado SU5000 Optical Turnstile, or the SU stands for Supervisor. It is a bi-directional turnstile that can be used either as a single lane or multiple lanes. The one that we're looking at today that we're going to be demonstrating is just a single lane unit. Now, why use optical turnstiles? Well, first, they truly increase the security of a building. Uh, they help reduce costs by reducing the need for physical security at multiple locations, freeing them, that personnel, to perform other critical duties throughout that building. Uh, they allow for proper and authorized credentials to be validated automatically, eliminating the human error factor. Uh, they can provide visibility to employees' time and attendance. If you wanted to take this system and integrate that with a time and attendance software package, absolutely no problem integrating that to provide that level of visibility. Uh, they can help to reduce theft or shrinkage uh, by integrating with the metal detectors or any other type of asset protection or loss prevention systems. And they also add an enhancement to the overall architectural aesthetics of that building. And just as a quick answer to the side, you can see the setup that we have here of that building. The only top is that the best thing is that you have what's called static lighting at LED lighting in the panels. This can be absolutely static lighting by LED lighting in the panels. This can be absolutely customizable to any type of application that you have for your customer. The pattern, the type of countertops that we got here on the very top before we get them finished. We can either 
powder coat or kind of finish or even um, metallically wrapped anything with the stainless finish. We can go to a more of a dynamic LED lighting if that's what is needed. And as you can see, even on these panels where there's the Alvarado logo, uh, we can have it etched to uh, uh, your particular building, your particular logo, a particular mascot, whatever that would be. It can be customized for that. And I will never underestimate this and never use an asterisk. The SU-5000 can be integrated with any access control system, period. It is a phenomenal product. Now, it integrates seamlessly with other touch-free access control applications like a proximity reader, uh, biometric scanners, uh, maybe facial recognition software, retinal or iris scanners, or probably all of us have participated in some place where we had to have our temperature taken. Temperature scanners. There's some products that are out there right now that can be integrated into a system like this that are more of a uh, tower type, like a safe tower or health check tower or checkpoint tower, that it can actually be connected to this system so that prior to proper credentialing being provided, it can check to make sure that you're wearing a mask. It can check to make sure you don't have a fever. If you do have a fever or a higher temperature than allowed, it will not, it will not allow for additional accessibility to occur. If you have a right temperature, then it'll deploy some hand sanitizer. Or maybe all three of those things have to comply with whatever the standard is prior to even being able to provide authorized credentialing. So anything like that can be easily set up. Now, once you actually present credentials, you're going to hear this little authorized chime, and the light in this panel over here where I am is going to turn green, and the panels are going to up, open up. So let's listen and, and see what happens. Hear that little chime, the light turns green, and it allows me to pass through. Once I've exited the lane, the panels are going to go back closed. Now, as you pass through, there's actual, actually 32 optical sensors that run across the top, and then redundant centers, uh, sensors that run across the bottom, just from a safety standpoint. Now, it also tracks a person's position in the lane, and if you stand there for a little too long, it's going to let you know. So, if I were to present my credentials, enter into the lane, and say I just decided to stand here, and, and Joe and I, who you met earlier, we were talking about our golf game, or, you know, good, bad, or ugly, we talked about it, or we talked about that Alabama plays its first football game this weekend. You hear that little chime? It's just a, a nice little way to let me know, Eddie, you need to move on. So, again, it provides that sensor uh, application to make sure that people don't just stand there for the entire time. Now, if someone happens to uh, be in, in running through or they're in a panic, you can physically run into these panels and they will break away for emergency egress. Just like, just like automatic door, automatic sliding doors will, uh, those active panels that slide apart, if you run through those before the sensor actually lets them open, you can break those panels away in the event of an emergency. Okay, But this system can be tied into any emergency override system like a fire alarm or something like that, which will allow those panels to automatically be powered open uh, in the event of an emergency. Now, in the event of power failure, the panels just are freely accessible and can be moved out of the way. The standard panel height is the one that we see right here. It's 35 inches. Uh, you can get it in a mid-height, which is 46, or a maximum height of 69. Now, a couple of things that I want to use and, and demonstrate today is the Alvarado SU-5000 turnstiles have the highest throughput capacity of any optical turnstiles on the market, primarily due to their fast processor speed that they deploy and the ability to accommodate what is called activation stacking. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to ask Ms. Crystal Lodgson, our Senior Manager for Administrative Services, who I think knows Mr. Jonathan Jones very well. Hey, Jonathan actually used to work here at, at Dormacaba. But, Crystal, I'm going to provide you with your credentials. Thank you so much. And what I'm going to show is I'm going to present credentials twice, representing two people that have authorized ability to be able to move through this. And then right behind me, Crystal's going to present hers, and we're going to see what happens. Because the, um, the activation stacking just means that multiple people can, can go through this if they've provided the right proper credentialing, and the panels don't just automatically close on them every single time per person. So I'm going to present two, one, two, and then Crystal's going to come and present hers. Excellent. Thank you, Crystal. So the panels are staying open because they're expecting that that third person is coming through. Now, if three people had not presented credentialing, it's going to close right after the second person or however many people have presented those proper credentials. Now, 
Another great security aspect of this particular product is the anti-tailgating or anti-piggybacking feature. So, Crystal, if you don't mind, I will take your card. Thank you so much. Crystal, unfortunately, left her card at home. I think she tied it to her daughter's uh, uh, bag at her, um, at her house. So she just left it there, decided not to bring it in today. So she feels like she's still got to get to work, has a lot to do. She's going to try to sneak in behind me. This particular application, we're going to see what happens, right? I'm going to present my credentials. And then as I come through, Crystal's going to come in right behind me. Crystal, thank you so much for your participation. I really appreciate it. Well, that time we heard two separate audible alarms. Now, what were those alarms? Number one, there was an alarm that showed that if someone just stood inside the barrier area, there was an alarm that went off that they're unauthorized. But then there was that secondary alarm where not only did Crystal enter into the barrier area, but she went ahead and pushed on through. And you heard that particular additional alarm. Well, something to always keep in mind that all of the alarms that go to the Alvarado product are local to the turnstiles, uh, but they do have remote transmission capabilities to an offsite uh, remote location or to a security desk because if someone actually walked into the area and then backed out, no harm, no foul. If they actually breach that area, you want someone from a security area to really know and be able to address that. Okay, so that is the primary aspect for uh, just the, the features and benefits of the SU-5000, but last but certainly not least, the SU-5000 is UL listed, it is virtually maintenance free, and is designed and built entirely in the United States of America, all in Chino, California. Okay, well, that pretty much wraps up the actual demonstration portion of our event today. I truly hope that there's something that you've learned from this time, but what I want to do now is for the last 11 minutes that it looks like we have, and if we need to stay a little longer, I'll be more than happy to do that, but I want to turn it now back over to Cindy, and we want to make sure that we take full advantage of what, and be able to answer any of these questions that y'all have submitted in your chat area. So, Cindy, any questions that we have? Yeah, absolutely, Eddie. Thanks. Uh, so, on the auto operator doors... Do we have the option of fail safe or fail secure in the end, event of a power failure or an alarm in the building? Well, really, when it comes to the automatic swing door operators, there's really not a true fail safe or fail secure aspect for the automatic doors. That would be encompassing with the panic device or the mag lock or, or whatever type of security application or access control application you have. The automatic operators, in the event of power failure or lockdown or whatever, they're going to function just the way they are unless you wanted to tie them specifically into whatever that area is. And say that you've got a fail secure aspect to a door, that can be integrated with your access control system to the automatic operator that would just shunt that automatic feature of that operator from opening uh, like it would be automatically. But the, the, the auto, actual automatic doors themselves uh, are not either fail safe or fail secure. That's usually a, an access controller, more of a security application. Awesome, thanks, Eddie. Uh -huh. uh, back to the double doors, a question there. Sure. Can it be used with a mold cover and a coordinator that allows the door, allows the door without the cover attached to close first? Sure. You can attach a coordinator, whatever. Like I said, that pair of doors, it could, you could actually just automate a single door of the pair if you wanted to. Or if it got a little off and you already had coordinators on that doors because, you know, one's got a, a surface applied mullion to the outside or to a, a piece to, to make sure that it covers over that gap in the middle of those doors for fire reasons or whatever, no issues what's at all. Uh, no issue with that at all. It can be incorporated with a coordinator. Uh, it's just a signal sent to the operator to push open those doors, but if there was a manual timing mechanism to make sure that one door closed before the other one did, no issues whatsoever. Awesome. Uh, next question. Can you refresh us on the range of the actuators and the difference between the different ones you have on the table? Sure, sure. Great question. Um, the 910TC has a range of one to about three or four inches away from the face. Okay. Now also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the 910TC is only designed for interior applications. Uh, if you had an exterior application, um, this is probably a better option. It's still a wave to open switch, but this is the 946T. Uh, we also have one very similar to this that's a, 
If you can, this is a four and three quarter inch square. Think about it, it's a six inch round version of this uh, that already comes in a NEMA 4 rated encasement for absolute weatherized and weatherproof conditions, exteriorated without any issue. This also has a read range of about that uh, three to four inches away from the face of this particular plate. But we have one that I am extremely excited about that in about a month we're going to be able to offer to all of you that are on this uh, particular live stream event today. Um, we saw the need, or our, I say we, our product developers for our switches saw the need that we really needed to take a look at an application of a product that we could deploy or utilize, especially in retrofit applications where they did not want to run those low voltage wires like we need to for the 910TC and they really wanted something that was battery operated, wireless transmitted, something like that that we could do that still though provided a touch free solution. Well, introducing the 912 WBT. Now Eddie, what does WBT stand for? WBT stands for wireless, battery, and touch free. Okay, so instead of actually having low voltage wires, this operates on AA batteries. Now, unlike the competition or our competitor out there, we actually deploy and utilize four AA batteries for this particular solution. Um, the tested amount of activations that we did was 500 activations. The batteries lasted 450 days. That's 500 activations every single day for a solid 450 days. Most of the time, you're not going to have 500 activations on this, especially not seven days a week. So thinking about a battery life, as long as you're utilizing good quality alkaline batteries, um, you should be able to get a year and a half to two years worth of battery life out of these without any issue whatsoever. Another great feature that exceeds anything out there in the marketplace today, the typical megahertz transmission signal that is utilized for uh, touch-free or wave token or battery operated solutions out there from a wireless standpoint, is 900 to 915 megahertz. The megahertz signal that is used in our WBT, the 912 WBT, is 2.4 gigahertz signal. Two and a half times that signal strength actually provides 100 feet of line of sight activation. Now, this switch also, just in the event that is needed, and I can show you just on the back, there's a little blue box that's right there. That's called a little potentiometer. And basically it provides a read range adjustment from the face of this switch <clears throat> from one out to 12 inches. Not longer than 12 because further than 12, it then uh, cancels out the fact that it should be a knowing act and it would not comply with that ANSI 156.19 standard. But again, we have several other switches that you can always go to dormacaba.us and just type in switches and it should be able to take you to uh, that RCI list of products for to be able to look at. But the ones that we talked about today, the Wave to Open, uh, 910TC or the 946T or the 950T, one to three or four inches, the 912WBT up to 12 inches as far as that overall read range. So reinforce this again, Eddie. Question came in. Average battery life, just reinforce what you just said. Sure. Actual, the actual testing that we took this particular product through was, it was based on 500 activations per day. 365 days for a year. And the batteries that we had installed lasted 450 days. So about, about a year and a third, if you will. But again, as I mentioned, rarely. Now, if you get 500 activations a day, you can bank on uh, 450 days worth of battery life. But rarely do you have that many activations. So if you average around 300 activations a day, you ought to be able to get a year and a half to two years worth of battery life out of these. If you wanted to be on the safe side just to make sure you never had a battery issue, just put in your planned maintenance package or, or planned maintenance um, situation just to change the batteries out once a year, once every year and a half, whatever you would want to do um, to make sure that you never had a battery issue. Or that's the first thing to check if you don't think that an, a, a wave to open switch that's battery operated is working. The very first thing to check is the battery. And there's just... It's a 3 30 seconds Allen wrench that just actually loosens up these tiny little screws. You can pull the face plate off and then you can change those batteries. Okay? I hope that answered the question. Yeah, you talked a little bit about retrofitting with a battery operated actuator. Mm -hmm. um, what about the rest of the products on the door? What if you have a standard mechanical door today you want to make touchless? Yeah, if you got a standard mechanical door, just remove the mechanical closure feature that you've got. 
install the automatic swing door operator with 110 volt power. Uh, then if the door positively latches, you're going to have to overcome that probably by an electric strike. And it depends on the type of locking mechanism that is that would determine the type of strike that you would need. And then install the battery operated switch. Uh, if you wanted to do it a wireless in this way, then you just got two of these switches that are mounted. This is the actual transmitter switch itself. Then there is one other component that is the receiver that's wireless that actually mounts right up into the header itself. And just like your garage door opener does when you set that either on your car or a new garage door opener remote, they talk to each other through a, a process <clears throat> and then that activation switch works with that receiver and it sends that signal to open up that door. Awesome, okay? thank you. We do have some questions about actually purchasing the product. So can you explain a couple things? First, a little bit about the kits that are available and what's available in a kit. Sure. And then second, we have a question about lead time approximate for this hardware. Sure, sure. Um, uh, we have four primary kits that we have ready to go and readily available right now. Uh, it's really just four SKUs. Um, because the 912 WBT is not quite yet ready yet, they're not part of those kit uh, packages yet. But a standard washroom or kit, if you will, includes an ED50 low energy swing door operator. And it comes in one of two finishes. Um, the two standard finishes that we have, which accommodate 90% of the applications out there is the one that we have here, which is a clear anodized aluminum. We also have it in a dark bronze anodized aluminum, which is a real dark, deep chocolate brown, almost black, but not quite. So we have a clear anodized aluminum and a dark bronze anodized aluminum that also come with two 910TC wave to open switches in either a push configuration or a pull configuration. The swing door operators themselves are non-handed, means they can be field adjusted to either provide for a right hand or a left hand door. Now, the only thing that you need to know though is if it's either a push, which all of the ones that we showed today, if I activate this door, that arm is going to physically push that door open. There are times when you need what's called a pull configuration. You need to mount the operator on the opposite side and actually pull it open. So we have those four kits, clear, dark bronze, push or pull, but either of those kits come with two 910TC wave to open switches. If you need electric strikes, those can be determined of what that is and then, then those can be um, uh, readily purchased. Now, as far as availability, these kits are ready to go right now. And uh, that's something to get with JL Jones uh, to be able to find out from them because they probably would be that supplier for you that are on this particular call. And uh, they would be able to help with pricing and availability and all that kind of stuff uh, directly from them. So I just want to direct you all back to them. Okay, it looks like we have one, two, 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 two more questions coming in. First question and then we'll call it a day. Um, is the reader looking for electrical energy from a human or if my hands are full and carrying boxes and bags, can I wave it in front of the reader? Will it activate? It's just yeah. based on movement. It's not any type of electrical field based on the person or an animal or whatever. It's just movement that is picking up. Okay. And then the final question we have here is, um, do the kits have a name or do they just have a SKU number? Uh, they just have a SKU number at this particular time. I mean, we may call them a touch-free washroom kit. Maybe because that's what I know that it's been referred to that before because typically those without the electric strike are utilized on that non-latching interior washroom application. But they're just going to really have a particular skew, skew that uh, the JL Jones group should certainly be able to provide that information to you. Okay. Well, listen, I want to thank you. We're right at a, a, an hour and one minute right now. We started about a minute late. Uh, but I just want to thank you again so much for taking the time. I want to thank Jonathan for getting this set up for your participation. Uh, please go to that microsite, which is touchfreeaccess.com. Walk through the interactive features, submit your information so we can be able to provide that additional information that you may need to discuss your individual touch-free solution needs. Um, but again, I just want to thank you for joining us today in our customer connection studio. If you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to email them to, uh, the Jones, uh, to the Jones group, to anyone within that. If they want to get those to us, we can make sure that we can provide that feedback to anyone that was on the call today. All right. Thank you again. I hope you have a great week.